What's up guys, Kyle here again, and today we're doing a little wacky experiment. I have a brand new Marshall 1968 cab, and I also have an oldie moldy beat to hell 1968 cab, and we're gonna compare them. Let's do it. guys hope you're doing great out there today if this is your first time here at my channel my name is Kyle and what I do is I take all sorts of awesome high gain related guitar equipment I record it with a simple SM57 setup and I give you the unprocessed audio on your end so if you're into e-standard thrash riffs dropsy hardcore riffs and dudes that can't get through two words without twisting their tongue you're in the right place consider hitting the like button and subscribing on your way out so you don't miss any more of my stuff thanks all right guys, so today I just figured we would set up a fun little non-scientific comparison video checking out a couple of different cabs in my collection. So I have a whole bunch of Marshall 1960A cabs in my collection. I've got them spanning all the way from, you know, the 70s. I've got a 70s cab with black backs in it all the way up into this literally brand new 1960A cab. I got this in a trade from somebody who I know well. I know that they bought it brand new and I know that they put less than an hour of time into this cab. So for all intents and purposes, it is brand new. And then over here, I have this old beat to hell 1960A from the JCM 900 era. I also know the person who owned this well before me. They use this many times at shows that our bands actually played together. I know that this thing has been put through the ringer. This thing has been used and abused and I know that those speakers have seen some things. So this cab is very old, very worn, very broken in. This cab is literally brand new out of the box. Why am I telling you all this? Well, it's because I have for a long time told people that when it comes to certain pieces of gear, I'm somewhat of a guitar cab and speaker nerd, but when it comes to kind of telling people what certain cabs and certain, you know, speakers sound like, it's always kind of tough because especially when it comes to Celestian stuff, like Celestian speakers have varied so much over the years. And plus there are so many of them out there. You have no idea how long those speakers have been played, what type of weather elements they've been exposed to. And then when it comes to the cab, you have no idea when the last time somebody went into a cab and kind of tidied everything up. I have long said that Marshall cabs are notorious for their hardware backing out of their cabinets, which causes them to sound loose. It causes them to lose their bass response because sometimes the speakers aren't even flush with the baffle. Sometimes the baffle isn't even screwed in all the way because the hardware just kind of tends to work itself out over time. It's just not very good hardware. And all of these different things have an effect on how a speaker cab ultimately is going to sound. So when people ask me how a 1968 cab sounds, generally I can kind of give them a description, but I always tell people it's gonna depend on the cab, it's gonna depend on the era of the speaker, it's gonna depend on how long that cab has been used, how basically how hard it's been used. There's so many different factors and I just kind of wanted to put that on display for you guys here in a video today and just show you how different two of the same cab can sound when some of these factors come into play. So with that being said, how are we doing this? Well, I have my KHE Audio amp switcher hooked up and we have both of these cabs hooked into my Splon 6550 Pro Stock amplifier. This is a hot rodded JCM 800 style amp as you heard in the beginning of this video. We are able to live switch back and forth between the two cabinets as we play without having to remove any cables. That's one of the great things about these KHE audio amp switchers. And I have stuck an SM57 on one speaker on either cab and tried to get the mic placement as close as I possibly could. Again, guys, this is not a super scientific video. This is kind of me just like 
being surprised at how different these cabs sounded together in the room and kind of wanting to make a video just to explain some of the differences that I'm always talking about for you guys. So hopefully these SM57s are as close as they can possibly get to the same position on either cabinet. And then also just to kind of make all things even, we've got a room mic placed directly in the center of these two cabinets pointed straight at my crotch. So not only does it pick up each cab equally, but it also picks up my essence. So with that being said, I'm just gonna play a few riffs through either one of these cabs and just basically let you guys hear the differences. The thing that I have noticed so far is that the new 1968 cab is much tighter, much brighter. It has a punchier low end response and I think that a lot of that is gonna have to do with, I've not opened up this old cab and gone through it yet, but the old cab has a much nicer sounding midsection to it. Some of these old G12 T75s actually have a nice mid-range to them. I've definitely played ones where they sound very scooped and fizzy like they're often described, but in this particular case, uh, these ones sound really nice, but the low end is kind of loose and it has no punch. And when I hit palm mutes, I can literally hear this cab flexing next to me. We're pretty loud in the room, so. Not only are there differences in the speakers, but there are also differences in the tightness of how well these cabs are put together at the moment. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and play some palm mutes and then some open chords on either cab and let you guys listen to it. We're gonna start with the old boy. So as you can hear, big differences between both of the cabs. I mean, it's it's night and day to me. I think that you're really gonna be able to pick up on those differences with the room microphone. Uh, I already kind of recorded one quick clip just to see if I could tell at the beginning of this video and the differences in the room mic were like night and day. Like it's kind of crazy. So the room mic that we're using, I forgot to mention in the beginning of the video, is the X1R ribbon microphone, microphone, microphone from S electronics and the reason that I wanted to use that particular microphone is ribbons kind of pick up everything they don't have the the cardioid cardioid whatever the hell pattern uh, they pick up from both sides of the microphone so it's gonna be kind of catching some of the reflections from around the room and everything and it should give you more of an accurate picture of the room sound or at least I hope that it will as opposed to the uh, the direct on SM 57s in the same spot on one speaker in either of the cabinets. So there should be a rather noticeable difference between the two. And this is just really gonna be a short video, guys. Uh, there's not really much else for me to do besides play a couple other riffs, go back and forth between the two amps again, and uh, you know, you guys give me your final thoughts. So with that being said, I'm gonna grab my Heritage guitar. We're gonna kick my boost off. We'll play a slightly lower gain riff and then maybe we'll grab something down tuned to see how it handles like the really, really low notes. <laughs> Thank you. 
right guys, so yeah, basically the same differences between the two. This new cab was almost so bright that like it was ear piercing in the room, even though I'm sitting right beside it, the frequencies are kind of going past me. It, it was uncomfortable. It's not, the cab sounds much tighter though. There's a little bit more clarity to this one, but overall the mids on the old cab just sound much nicer to me. So kind of thinking if I go in and kind of tighten this cab up, a little bit some of those screws i bet you are very very loose it'll kind of bring the punchiness and the tightness of the cab back and it'll compete with the new cab a little bit more in that category i guess is that a category it is now but it will also have the smoother top end and the nicer mids to boot so uh yeah creating all sorts of new speaker myths today all right guys last but not least we have the Schecter pt hybrid hellraiser something like that from my friends over at zounds.com. I've never actually played a seven string through this amp, so I'm really curious how this is gonna sound. Here we go, starting on the old boy. Alright guys, sorry for the extra noise and feedback. For some reason, the way that I set things up all quick and dirty here, it's creating some extra noise. But hopefully you guys are able to hear it clearly enough that you get the picture of what I'm hearing in the room because I'm hearing a pretty substantial, pretty significant difference between the two. A lot of people say that most newer Celestion speakers in general sound brighter and harsher and a little bit more thin than the older models. So do you think that it's some sort of manufacturing variance on the newer Celestion models that seems to cause that across the board? Or do you think people are totally full of shit when they say that? What did you guys hear on the differences between these two cabinets? I'm really, really curious to see what you guys think. Again, this was kind of just a for fun video. I'm sure people are gonna roast me in the comments for one reason or another, but I really just wanted to show you guys why that I'm always so apprehensive to give a detailed description of what certain cabs sound like because it really depends on the cabinet, the individual cab. It really depends on the speakers, how well they've been broken in, yada, yada. There are so many factors that go into it that can make one cab sound completely different from the next, whether it be old and broken in, whether it be new, or whether they be the same time frame, same era, and there's just something about them that makes them sound crazy different from each other. Have you guys had this similar experience? Have you guys had the exact opposite experience? Whatever it is, let me know down below in the comments of this video. I'll be sure to meet you down there to talk about it. If you would like to pick up anything that you see in this video, my Sweetwater and Zounds affiliate links will be down below. That is how you can help this channel and help yourself at the same time. And then that way I don't have to sell off my speakers in order to make videos like these and be able to afford to live. Nah, just kidding. But still, it really does help. If you would also like to support the channel directly, consider adding your name to this list of incredible people and joining my Patreon community and supporting the channel that way because everything that you guys put into that Patreon account goes back into making videos like this for you guys, making more and better content for you guys. I really very much appreciate each and every one of my Patreon members. Thank you guys for the support. That's gonna do it for me today, guys. Kyle here again. Thanks so much for watching. I'm saying things out of order. I'm ready to be done. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. You know what this wall is missing? Another amp.
There we go.